Hello and welcome to Qi, the Contemporary History Intervention. This week's edition is about one of the favorite pastimes of academic historians, myth busting. This video will go online on April the 26, 2021. That will be to the day 35 years after the explosion of Reactor 4 at the Chernobyl nuclear power station in what was then the Soviet Union and what is nowadays Ukraine. Chernobyl means different things to different people. It is an ongoing cleanup job. It is a tourist destination. It's background for a computer game, Stalker. But it's also an event that is cited by critics of nuclear power very frequently. And that is what we'll talk about. The myth of Chernobyl and the myth of the nuclear disaster. Chernobyl is part of a triad of nuclear disasters that are cited ad nauseum by critics of nuclear power. There is Harrisburg in the United States in 1979, there is Chernobyl in 1986, and there is Fukushima, Japan in 2011. That is the myth that I will uh, untangle in this uh, broadcast. Does it hold up to scrutiny? Is this the event that told the world that nuclear power is too dangerous, too risky, and should be discontinued. Well, there is an element in this myth that escapes academic scrutiny, and that is the element of wishful thinking. Um, this myth is cited most frequently by people who are critical of nuclear power, who think that, nuclear, that Chernobyl should be the event that ends nuclear power for all because it flags the dangerous that it has. Now, whether you subscribe to this view depends on your view of nuclear radiation, your opinion on technological risks, and maybe your view of available alternatives. Historians cannot tell you whether nuclear power is acceptable or not, but historians can tell you whether this has actually worked in the past. Did disasters change the course of nuclear history? Well, there is, if you want a one sentence summary uh, in this age of sound bites, my summary is disasters are overrated. Let's look at Harrisburg first in 1979. There is a myth uh, even uh, supported by some academic historians that Harrisburg ended the boom of nuclear uh, power in the United States. In a nutshell, no, that's not the case. Cost overruns and delay had done the jobs in the year before 1979. It was just too expensive, too unattractive. Utilities grew cold on nuclear power. And actually, there were nuclear power plants that were switched to fossil fuels as the last moment out of sheer economics. The picture is similar for Chernobyl. Uh, Chernobyl happened in 1986, and at that time, the pace of reactor construction was already down considerably all over uh, Western Europe. In West Germany, the last reactor was ordered in 1982, four years before the Chernobyl disaster. Even in France, uh, the nuclear nation par excellence in uh, Europe, um, the pace of construction had already uh, slowed down considerably. France was building nuclear reactors as if in a frenzy in the 70s. It became slower in the 80s and then it pattered out in the uh, 90s. There was a referendum in Italy in 1987 where the Chernobyl disaster did play a role. Uh, the uh, uh, Italian electorate uh, voted against nuclear power in that referendum and that had consequences for nuclear development. But if you look at the big picture, it is quite clear that Italy had already missed the bus on nuclear power at that time. There was no way in which Italy would have become a nuclear nation on a par with other European countries, France, West Germany, Belgium, Sweden, uh, the United Kingdom, those countries were way ahead and there was no way that Italy would have built anything on a par. And if we look at Russia, well, Russia kept building reactors. In fact, it even started another reactor of the RBMK, a type that is the type that exploded in uh, Chernobyl and some of its design features played a role uh, in uh, that explosion. Nonetheless, Russia, uh, the Soviet Union started the Ignalina nuclear power plant unit 2 uh, with this uh, type. Um, that came to be situated in the European Union because Lithu it was situated in Lithuania. Lithuania became part of the European Union. It is now uh, off the grid uh, because that was one of the conditions of the European Union when Lithuania um, became a member uh, state. But Russia itself is still committed to uh, nuclear power and it still has RBMK uh, reactors 
operating. And if we look at Fukushima, well, there is Germany. Angela Merkel reversed her stance on nuclear power, and that paved the way uh, for the consensual phase out of nuclear power in Germany, which is uh, bound to conclude at the end of next uh, year. But then this was the catalyst, something that played a role in a long farewell to nuclear power in Germany, basically the last step uh, in that long uh, farewell. If you look at Japan, well, Japan still banks on nuclear power. Uh, Japan switched off all nuclear reactors in the aftermath of Fukushima and is now busy getting them on the grid again. At this moment, nine reactors are operational in uh, Japan. The government would wish to, to be more, but Fukushima did jeopardize the relations between the nuclear watchdogs and the utilities, which were pretty cozy previously. Um, and so the return to nuclear business, as usual, is uh, rather hobbled in uh, Japan. So nuclear disasters do matter. They do have consequences. But they're not that moment of reckoning that changes everything. Um, that is because nuclear power is not really, first and foremost, about the wishes of people. And it has never uh, been. Nuclear power is about a huge complex of technological artifacts, expertise, and a political context that allows the operation of these reactors. This complex has tremendous resources and it has tremendous momentum. If it is gets moving into one direction, it's not stopped and certainly not by something as ephemeral as a disaster. Nonetheless, we see a decline of nuclear power all over uh, Europe. If we include, exclude Russia here for a moment, there are exactly three active nuclear construction projects in all of Europe. Uh, one in Finland, Olkiluoto, one in France, Flamanville, and one in this country, Ingli Point C. That is it. And it is all but certain that nuclear power will continue its downward trajectory over the next year, simply because we're not building new reactors and old ones are going off the grid. But that is not due to disasters. It's certainly not due to popular fears. It is the result of pure economics. Nuclear power is just too expensive to be competitive on a free market. And that was the case long before the recent boom of renewable energy. There's a place to look into this economic history that is in the shadow of the myth of Chernobyl, Harrisburg, Fukushima. There's a place to study this demise of nuclear power, and that place is, of all places, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, USA. I'm talking about the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant. When the disaster happened in 1979, um, a partial meltdown uh, that required a cleanup over many years that cost somewhere around one billion US dollars. And some of the elders will remember that was a time when a billion US dollars was a lot of money. But the Three Mile Island nuclear power complex consisted of two reactors. And the second reactor um, worked rather well. Um, it had a license to operate that ran until 2014. In 20, 2008, um, the utility applied for an extension. Um, it wanted to run for another 20 uh, years. Um, this extension was granted, which is pretty normal for U.S. reactors uh, nowadays. The default lifespan of civil nuclear reactors in the U.S. is now at uh, 60 years. Um, there are even some reactors that have a license for 80 years uh, now. So it's not unexpected that Three Mile Island would get an extension for uh, 20 years. What is noteworthy, though, is that this extension was granted without a hearing because nobody requested a hearing. So much for the shock of the disaster. Nobody was there around the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant that thought maybe we should talk about this. Though there is something to talk about, that there are serious risks involved in extending the lifespan of nuclear reactors. We do not know whether you can safely operate a nuclear reactor after 60 years simply because we've never tried that. There's not a single reactor anywhere in the world that has run for 60 years. So there is a safety issue here that we will need to talk about and hopefully talk about beyond expert circles. But Three Mile Island is no longer a danger in this respect because it is switched off. It's off the grid uh, now. The utility applied for subsidies with the Pennsylvania legislature a few years ago. Uh, it did not get those subsidies. The legislature did not act. And as a result, the utility decided to switch off the last remaining reactor at the Three Mile Island. And then 
uh, enter the lengthy process of decommissioning, which will take decades. But the reactor is off the grid since September 2019. So maybe I should amend my soundbite from early in this video. Disasters are overrated, but economics still matters. <laughs>